to page um, 10 in the booklet, please. Uh, just a little bit of a reminder of both methods. is the algebraic long division. I'll show first of all, and then the grid method. So um, if you want to carry on and do the grid method, and then I'll check the answers with you. But watch out, this one's a little bit trickier than the ones that we've done before. So looking at the algebraic long division, we say to yourself, um, what times x will give us 3x squared? So in this case, it's going to be uh, 3x cubed, rather. So it's going to be 3x squared. Uh, we multiply underneath. Right, there's a slight problem there. That slight problem, when we subtract, we get zero. So what we have to do is we have to take down the 4x, the minus 4x and the plus 4. So that goes into this position here. So we just ignore the zeros on the left-hand side there. Then we go about it in exactly the same way. We say to ourselves, this x, what do we multiply by x to get minus 4x? And that would be minus 4. So we get minus 4x and plus 4. And then remembering that we're subtracting both of them, so we get no remainder. So that actually means when we've got 3x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 4 divided by 3 uh, Sorry, that was wrong. It's x <coughs> minus 1. That will give us an answer of 3x squared minus 4. Okay, looking at the grid method like we did before. And this is where it breaks down a little bit because you've got zeros. So we say to ourselves, uh, the first part that we've got is our x here and the 3x cubed. So what do I multiply x by to get the 3x squared or divide 3x cubed by th x? And that would give us um, 3x squared. Then multiply the minus 1 gives me 3x minus 3x squared. Now what I actually want is, if you look back at the original, I want it to be 3x minus 3x squared. So I don't have to add anything on to it. So that part there is going to be a 0. So 0 times minus 1 is also going to be 0. A slight problem there, because where do I go to next? Well, if we look at the original, the next thing that we've got is minus 4. So that goes into the grid then. So if we take that and we put minus 4x in here, so we've got minus 4 at the top and a plus 4 at the bottom. Yeah? So that's how we deal if we've got zeros and then we just move on to the next place value of the um, algebra. So the next term there. Right, moving on to page 11. Uh, it's example 8. <clears throat> now notice what the question is asking this time. It's asking for a remainder. Yeah, a remainder. So we're expecting to have a number at the very end. So whatever method that you use, whether it's the algebraic long division method or the grid method, can you give that a go now? So I'll do both of them as well, just bear with me. So this is the algebraic long division. Subtract them, and I get plus 3x squared. Then I multiply by plus 3x. Subtract them, and I get minus 4x. Bring the 10 down. Multiply by minus 4. And when I subtract that, I get minus 6. So therefore, the remainder is minus 6. Now, how does that work out when we do it on the grid method? Well, again, we're going to have a quadratic 
is going to be the answer when we're doing a cubic divided by a linear. So we'll have our x here and a minus 4 here. And then we're dividing into 2x cubed. Right, so we're going to get 2x squared here and minus 8x squared there. Right, what do we need? We need minus 5x squared, so we're needing a plus 3x squared in here. So that gives me a plus 3x here. Gives me minus 12x here. Um, <coughs> I'm actually needing minus 16x, so that has to be minus 4x up here. So that's minus 4, and that gives me plus 16. But if we look at the final number that we've got is a plus 10, and what we've actually got is a plus 16, then what do we have to do to that 16 to get 10? What do we have to do to it? Minus, minus 6, yeah? So our minus 6 can go up here. So that there is our remainder. So both ways they work exactly the same. Except you've got to be aware if you've got a zero in one of the columns with your grids, you just take the next algebraic term and then continue on with that. If you've got a remainder, then again, it'll go outside the grid and you can have it at the very end. Any questions with that? We're okay? Uh, the next exercise, what I'd like you to do on this one, and it's just really to get you into the swing of it, is... Uh, 1a, 2a, 4a, and then try question 6. Now, that's the absolute bare minimum. So what I need you to do is, if you're stuck on any of them, to do some more in your own time or even in class, okay? So I'll give you, what, about five, six minutes to do that as quick as you can. Okay, for question 1, then, use an algebraic long division and the grid method we get x squared minus 2x plus 5 and you should actually write it in <coughs> this form at the very end especially in an exam situation okay then um, if we move on there's just your answers for uh, question 2 and 3 and then moving on to question 6 that is definitely an exam standard type question you'd be expected to to answer that because you were asked for what is the remainder um, we're going to come on and do two things called the factor theorem and the remainder theorem, but your algebraic long division or your grid method will always work. It will absolutely be fine that way. Does anybody have... Right, what we've got here is this cubic function. Now, remember what we did before in terms of our quadratics. These part points here on the x-axis your roots aren't they so they're factors of it so we can actually write the algebraic function for this cubic so if we have a look what we've got here we've got a root of minus three we've got a root of minus one and we've got a root of one so the roots can actually be written down as minus three minus one and one that allows us to be able to factorise. Now, how's that? Well, if we rearrange this equation, we get x plus 3 equals 0. So that's one factor, isn't it? If we rearrange this one, we get x plus 1 is equal to 0. And on this one, we get x minus 1 is equal to 0. So if you think about it, when you solve a quadratic and you get your two brackets, you get your two roots or where it cuts the x-axis. And on this one, what we've got is the three brackets now that we can write down. So we can actually factorise it into these three brackets. So x plus 3, x plus 1, 
and x minus 1. That's not new to you. We've done that at, at uh, quadratics, yeah? And that allows us to be able to write down equations of any cubics or quadratics that we come across. So this actually means that we've got factors. And this means that x plus 3 is a factor, as is x plus 1 is a factor. And also x minus 1 is a factor. And that says to us then that at these roots, at these points where x is minus 3, minus 1 and 1, f of x is also y. So this can be y. What's the value of y when it cuts the x-axis? 0. There you go. And that's what you get. So this is where the cubic cuts the x-axis. So any time the f of x is equal to 0, or y is equal to 0, you've got a factor because you've got a root. <coughs> so a factor and a root are sort of the same things that we can interchange. Right, moving on to the next page then. We can actually show this if we substitute the values in. So our original equation was f of x is equal to x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. If we now sub these values into our original equation, we should get 0. And that's crucial because that's what's known as the factor theorem. Right, so let's substitute it in. You must show your substitution as well. You've got a, a calculator to use. And can I suggest that you always use... A, so that's multiplied by... Always use a bracket <coughs> if you're doing powers with a negative number. Because otherwise it will return a positive answer for a cube, which is not right. Right, so what do we get? We get minus 27 plus 27 plus 3 minus 3 equals 0. And that part there you must show. You won't get any method marks if you just write an answer down, even though you've got a calculator to do it. So that's your method mark in there. Can you do exactly the same for the minus 1 and the 1, please? And the part there that's absolutely crucial is showing that each of these is equal to zero. And as soon as you can do f of something equals to zero, then you know that you've got a factor. So the bit that we found is that f of x is equal to 0, which means that each of these three brackets are factors. And that's what's known as the factor theorem. So the factor theorem. If you think back to what we did in the previous lessons where we did algebraic long division, if we choose a number and we find f of that number is equal to 0, we know that it's a factor. So that's another way of doing it. But when we come on to do the exam questions, the wording of it is crucial in selecting the correct method. So just be aware of that when we come across it. Right, how can we do that then? If we're not told what numbers to put in, 
uh, when we had our quadratic, we looked at the end number, didn't we? We looked at that number at the end to see what two numbers went in the bracket. Well, you do exactly the same thing with the cubic. So I'm looking at the minus 3. And that means we have got factors of minus 3. They could be plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 3. So if I try all four of those there might be in there a factor or something that makes f of the number equal to zero. And if that happens, then we get a factor. Is that okay? So if we look at what we've got before, we know that f of minus 3 was equal to zero. f of minus 1 was equal to zero and f of 1 was also equal to 0. So we could tell from that it was x plus 3 was a factor, x plus 1 is a factor, and x minus 1. What do you notice about the signs and the factor compared to the signs and the function? They're opposite, aren't they? So you've got f of minus 3, so you get x plus 3. And that's all to do with the rearranging of the little equation at the beginning there. Right, moving forward then, this is what the factors theorem actually states. And you need to learn this. It's not given to you, you need to learn. If f of a, and that a is just a number, and it could be a fraction as well, it could be any number. If that's the case then x minus a is a factor of f of x. So if I gave you f of minus 2 is equal to 0, what is the factor? x plus 2, yeah. x plus 2 is a factor. Now this one's a little bit trickier. Say the number in there was a half, yeah. Right, the way to think about it, if we move that forward, is x is equal to a half. That's the x-coordinate on the axis. Now remember how we rearranged it. If we rearrange that, we get x minus a half is equal to zero. Yeah, so that would be your bracket. However, we don't want fractions in the bracket, so I'm going to multiply that by two. So we'll get 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. So that tells me that 2x minus 1 is a factor. Example 1 then. Show that x plus 1 is a factor of this cubic. Right, if it is a factor, what can I write down from the factor theorem? So if x plus 1 is a factor, then f of something has got to be equal to 0. What is that something? Minus 1. Okay, so we can show that by putting in f of minus 1 and substitute it into our original function. So it's a minus number, put it into a bracket, please. And show this substitution because you'll be given a method mark for it. Then work it out fully. We've got minus 1 plus 2 plus 5 minus 6. So f of minus 1 is equal to... 7 minus 7, which equals 0. Therefore, x plus 1 is a factor. So this, this one is actually using the factor theorem. Now, can you notice in the question, it doesn't tell you which method to use. It just says show. However, if it says show using the factor theorem, that's what you would have to do. 
Because it doesn't, you can use the second method of just doing algebraic long division or the grid method and find out your remainder is zero. But that's really, really important. If the question says use the factor theorem, if you use algebraic long division, you will get zero marks. You have not followed the correct method. Okay, so we'll look at method two because this has actually allowed us to use another method. So method two, which I think is a little bit trickier. Uh, I'll just use the grid method because that'll be a bit easier, methinks. And we'll take the x and the plus one and we've got x cubed in there. So we're going to get a x squared and we need two of them. <coughs> How many x's do we need? So we need minus six x. So that implies that x plus 1 is a factor. Okay, if we just, um, using the factor theorem, not the grid method, we're going to move on to the exercise. This time we've been asked to factorise. We've not been told any method at all. So I've said, let's just have this function f of x equal to the cubic. How are we going to go about being able to find a factor? What do we have to look at first of all? The constant. Yeah, the constant, which is the 12 at the end, yeah? So 12 has got a huge amount of factors though, hasn't it? So you're going to have to try and uh, look at it. The numbers aren't that difficult, but if we have a look at the constant, which is 12, then we've got to look at the factors and those factors could be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, and plus or minus 12. So we've got quite a lot. We've got six options there, haven't we? And if we don't choose wisely, we're going to end up doing an awful lot of arithmetic. So um, shall I give you a clue? Um, I think 2 might be a good bet, okay? But that would be up to you to have a look at the numbers and think, right, I'll sub it in. 1 and 2 is usually the ones to start off with. So I'm going to choose x equals 2. So let's do f of 2. It's equal to 2 cubed, 3 times 2 squared, 4 times 2 and then plus 12. So f of 2 is going to be 8 minus 12 minus 8 plus 12. Good choice, because that tells me that x minus 2 is a factor. And that's actually using the factor theorem. We've got a couple of choices now. We could go through all the rest of the factors and see which other ones give us zero or we could do our algebraic long division or our grid method and then we'll factorize it fully so that was your key word is factorizing so we've got to put this cubic into brackets basically okay would you like to try um so our factor is x minus two and that's going to go into our original equation our cubic again if you want to use the grid method you're more than welcome to do that as well
And that's what we were expecting. We are expecting absolutely no remainder whatsoever. So our original function, f of x, can be written as the factor that we divided by and then a quadratic. Yeah, is that okay? Now, is that factorised fully? Would you say? Is there anything else that we've got to look at? Say again, sorry. Yeah, so we have to look at that quadratic there. And if we look at that quadratic, we might be able to factorise that further. So that brings us back to C1 and being able to, to deal with quadratics. So if we factorise that fully, we should get two brackets there, an X and an X, a 3 and a 2 by the looks of it, a minus and a plus. So could you tell me the other values, f of something equals 0 and another one equals 0? We've already done x minus 2. x plus 2, what value would I put in the bracket? The minus 2 would be there and the x minus 3, we put a 3 in there. Yeah? But because we've got so many numbers there from the constant at the end, there's 6 of them. You can either do six calculations or you could quickly go into your grid method or the algebraic long division. And that's it, fully factorised. So if it asks you to factorise or fully factorise, you've got to watch out for the quadratic being able to factorise as well. Right, what I'd like you to try for Friday is um, if we move on to, I think it's the next page now, which is... If we look at on page 19, this is example 9, what I'd like you to do is finish this for Friday 13th of Jan. And then we'll have a look at that, the solution to that. Notice there's two ways that we've been asked, algebraic division and the factor theorem. So both methods. Which is exercise 1D. And if we look at the wording of the question, it says use the factor theorem to show A, B and C. Can you have a go at all three of those, please? Um, and then we'll come back to the, the answer. So really important, it says use the factor theorem. You're not using algebraic long division. So look at it, the first one, as we said, uh, the statement here, if x minus 1 is a factor, then that's your statement. You then substitute 1 into your original function here. You show the full substitution, you get an answer equal to zero, and then you say, therefore, the factor x minus 1 is a factor. Right, can you go on and do b and c, please? Okay, looking at the answers then, if we have been given the factor, we just take, if x minus 1 is a factor, it's f of 1, substitute it in, and we get an answer. On the second one, it's f of x plus 3, so it's we look at f of minus 3, and on the last one, we look at f of 4. Happy with that? That's okay? So that's your factor theorem. So if it says that in a question, this is the method that you must, must use. Go back to page 8.